Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today is the start of a brand new podcast called Beyond the Throne, a Game of Thrones podcast. And I'm here with my special co host, Miltos Yerolemo. We've been planning this for a few months now, and it's so amazing to have him be here with me to talk about Game of Thrones on a weekly basis. Hi, Miltos. How are you today? Hello, Adam. It's a great, great pleasure. Like you said, it's been um, a few months in the making. I've been very excited because it's something I've wanted to uh, to do. And when you kind of reached out and and uh, said, "Hey, well, how about this?" It was like it was like perfect because it was uh, a yeah. it coincided with exactly what I was kind of uh, planning. So I'm really glad that. Uh, that uh, I have you to uh, steer this this um, iron fleet of yes. a <laughs> of a podcast, <laughs> and uh, and uh, I'm I'm sure it's going to be uh, a great and will evolve and develop as we really get into it. But uh, yes. yeah, it's a real pleasure, and I'm very excited. Yeah, and I'm glad you, you're on board of it. And obviously, Game of Thrones is a huge part of your life. It's a huge part of my life as a fan obviously because for those who are new or coming into the game of thrones world miltos was obviously known as serial pharrell in season one of game of thrones um a huge part of aya's story and development in the game of thrones world so um today's gonna be an introduction to the podcast and what you can expect from us and we're gonna give our first thoughts on some of our favorite moments from the show and i'm sure yeah so um Let's just give the audience a bit of an introduction of what's to come from Beyond the Throne. So a few of the things I'd love to see on this channel and for us to talk about is some episode reactions down the line, talk about what our favorite episodes are. As we evolve, obviously, we're going to talk about our current favorite episode, and that might change over the course of the podcast. Um, we, spoke, we spoke about the possibility of interviews and discussions with other cast members from... Game of Thrones season one through eight and the possibility of House of Dragons. Um, <laughs> uh, I know a couple of I know a couple of them. So so we're in oh, wow. we're in discussions of uh, of of trying to get them. Obviously, everyone is going to be wanting to talk to them when we get closer to it. Yes. But but um, the good thing with uh, with um, with I, I can call in some favors. So so I'm hoping that we will get some uh, cool people to talk to and not just cast members, but uh, production members as yes. well. Sound design, you know, because be as far as I'm concerned, and I'm sure that the listeners and watchers will also be aware that um, there's so much uh, uh, talent on these productions oh, absolutely and it's always exciting to kind of find out how things are progressing and uh developing amongst not just the cast but uh but every every part of uh of of the production so so I'm, we're hoping to to kind of be able to do some really nice in-depth and not just talk about the episodes but talk about uh, really nerdy stuff like you know talking about uh, sound design uh um you know, art design, uh, all all aspects yeah. of how we create shows like this, really. Yeah, exactly. Like you said, the props as well, the costumes, uh, in depth, yeah. and uh, and 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 kind of really going behind the scenes. So that's that's the idea, and also amongst all this, having giveaways, merch will be a kind of constant thing, uh, and. Um, uh, and really making this podcast as interactive as possible because the, my favorite ones are the ones where we really get people who uh, watch it to get involved because to me that is the the, the most exciting thing it's 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 the dialogue and the conversation yeah. that we all can have and also we, we should do some rewatches because there are some episodes I've only ever seen once oh really yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm not. Um, this is the thing. I mean, I'm very busy and I get I have so much to do. <clears throat> uh, the one thing about Game of Thrones is that I actually watched it as a fan. Most of the time, I don't see half of the stuff that oh. uh, that I ever I'm ever in because I uh, it's less it's less important to me. The process of making it is what I I really enjoy. And yeah. and and um, 
uh, yeah, I've always been like this. I'm always like, you know, I'm a little bit, <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I don't really need to watch it. And other people can watch it for me and tell me whether it's any good. Yeah. Um, because I wouldn't be able to tell because I only see the stuff in, you know, like it's under a microscope. And, yeah. and I'm always going, really? Is that, was that what I decided to do? You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but uh, but definitely rewatching and having you know a a, a a refresh of especially as we run up to uh, House of Dragons I think would be a really great thing and yeah uh, sure and be great for me because for example like there are some shows I haven't you know I've only ever seen once yeah that's a great idea because like I, I haven't watched Game of Thrones properly in a long period now obviously since season eight wrapped up. So yeah, I'd love to go back to like the like season three, season four. They're the ones I've not seen in a very long time, for example. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah, diving into really good conversations and um what we might have expected to be better in places, you know, what we would would have loved to have seen from certain episodes and certain characters, I think would have been really cool. Like obviously season eight got a lot of hate. Some people did enjoy it in many ways, but you gotta you gotta praise the craftsmanship that everyone behind the scenes went into putting that season you know, ahead and maybe what we could have expected from season eight in general to be maybe that bit better. So that could be a good conversation for another day as well. And that's a very well, long conversation. That's a long <laughs> winding conversation. We want to start that. That's going to take a few, a, a few episodes <laughs> yeah, as well. We might get a lot of interaction. We've got time. So yeah, I think exactly. it's the great, why not? Why not? Yeah. yeah. And I think also maybe having trivia um, talks as well, you know, test how much we know about game of Thrones uh, and having interactions with um, fans as well, see how much they know about Game of Thrones as well, would be, would be yeah. really cool. Yeah, people's expectations of the of the new show. Yes, because obviously there's going to be ultimately more than one of them uh, going to be hitting our our airwaves. So um, so yeah, these things are are exciting, and uh, and I thought it, it, it. This is why I was really excited about it because, you know, beyond the throne is is about you know where we are and where we're going yes the world of westeros and and uh, george r r martin is uh, continually evolving and we may even be lucky enough to um uh get an interview with george r r martin as well which is what i really want yeah. i mean i am uh, friends with him i'm really good friends with his assistants are you actually oh uh, wow yeah, yeah, and um, and uh, you know, it you, you, all of these things are are uh, time dependent, availability of dependent. Of course, it is, but I am sure at some point we're going to be able to do that. So, so that would be a standout for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and find out exactly when. Uh, Winds of Winter is actually going to be released because <laughs> I'm sure yes. it's imminent. I'm sure it's imminent. I would be, uh, uh, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna, I'm not going to because you know what's going to happen. If, if even if I, if I kind of have a guess, it will get me into so much trouble. So we're not going to, um, <laughs> we're not going to speculate, but we are going to lay the groundwork so that people can uh, can know what, what what to expect. Yeah, absolutely. And um, to have the guy who obviously created the show, you know, to get behind his mind would be absolutely fantastic. And for people to get more insight on the show would be a great thing for fans, obviously. So what I wanted to go into today is, you know, just to give people a bit of insight of our thoughts on Game of Thrones, what our favourite episode is so far, our favourite character, and maybe our favourite moment as well. You know, just a couple of things that might change over time, but what currently we have in our mindset as our favourite moments. So if you want to kick it off with your favourite character from the whole Game of Thrones list. <laughs> My favourite character. I've said this many times in, in, in interviews. And um, and uh, I think no matter how much I think about it and uh, ruminate on it, for me, I mean, there's lots of fantastic characters. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it goes without saying that kind of my favourite character was Arya Stark, just because oh. I thought her story was, 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 oh, you know, it's like, it's personal, right? Yeah. Um, but, but as a, as a, just as an audience member, um, Jamie Lannister for me. Oh, I love this development. 
because he really he was really interesting mainly because i i only read three of the books when we were working on it and then i got distracted by reading other book, books for work and so you know those I didn't, <laughs> I didn't end up reading anymore um i it was such a surprise uh what happened with jamie and where his character went with I agree. the TV show let alone the books that i that i i genuinely had one of those moments that i very rarely you you have when you're watching things or reading things or whatever whatever your experience of the of story of a story is but it genuinely uh floored me and i and i was so um impressed with how um you know that character was allowed to have such an amazing uh arc uh always surprised i mean there's so much so many surprises in within in within those stories but yeah. but uh jamie's was particularly uh kind of hit hard mainly because when you first met him you really didn't like him oh god and I, yeah and i and i really by the end of it i i i was i was an absolute fan you know and i yeah. uh, and 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 um and I like. I think I loved him even more because he was so flawed, and you know, it's 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 a real testament. And I guess this is the reason why Game of Thrones is so was such a a phenomenon, and why people really, when once they got on board, they 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 were 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 really emotionally attached to it yeah it was because it, it allowed it allowed you to have make those connections and it allowed you to 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 experience it in a way that that most of the time we just don't get to do because because we know what stories are going to be like you know we do not expect um twists and turns and uh in you know i mean Game of Thrones really changed the way that we tell stories. It already had started with things like The Sopranos um, and uh, are, you know, kind of moving from uh, feature films into, you know, HBO really did create uh, a channel where you got a chance to tell stories with lots of time and over a great period of time so that you could really develop things that you just would were never able to do before yeah. and once and i mean of course now you know this is how we really tell stories M most of the talent um script writers directors actors you name it they're now all working in tv and that never was the case you know the real talent worked in feature films and so and so that's one thing that game of thrones really really uh, catapulted even though HBO had already started it you know it really catapulted all of that and um and made um, and now and now that's how we tell stories yeah I agree because obviously there's a lot more money in TV as well as Game of Thrones helped as you said catapult it into you know you look at the cinematography side of things the directing the writing it's all just massively improved and obviously they're getting more budgets so it's amazing to see and it's allowing more talents to come to the big screen well smaller screen sorry to develop their acting and talents which is amazing to see so yeah and i agree with jamie lannister because his development was the best in the show because he went from being the most hated to being one of the most liked so I love nikolai that nikolai is that perfect combination of incredibly charming incredibly smarmy you know so so many elements that you yes. can either love or hate and sometimes at exactly the same time you know <laughs> yes. having those feelings so so it's a real testament to his performance too yes absolutely uh, so obviously jamie lannister would be one of my favorite characters but i think i'm landed on Jon snow purely because of the massive journey he goes on learning about his heritage you know just, i think it was just told perfectly mm. um I would have done with a better ending, you know, with the whole Daenerys thing. 
but you know we can't have everything happy can we suppose <laughs> but yeah um it was a fantastic story and i love john snow and kit harrington did a fantastic job of playing him for sure yeah him and um uh emilia as danny the 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 interesting thing those two characters in the books there's a lot of introspection and a lot of those characters especially at the beginning are written from the point of view um, of what's going on inside them because a lot of the time things are happening to them yeah and they're not they don't express what they're you know they don't say the words of what they're what you know and this is the, the hardest thing to to try and find a way to to tell that story in a visual medium so in books it's it's it works incredibly well because yes. you know inner monologues and, and the way that characters are thinking and feeling and reacting to any situation they don't need to speak words we just need to 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 you know and the good beauty of, of george's writing is that he can he can take us into that in a world yeah which is really difficult to do uh in tv and in a visual medium and so those characters are very very difficult and and so the performers are have got a big job so not only have the script writers got to find a way without it sounding like exposition because that can be incredibly boring and turgid and and just not interesting not yeah, very yeah. interesting you've got to find a way visually to to do the stuff that the books do and i think hbo um you know achieved that and as as these characters uh, assumed more power and responsibility of course it, you know that change that made it was it kind of easier yeah but but uh at the same time those characters are and the same with bran bran is another example yes of this. i think the the character of bran in the books and the three-eyed raven is uh is really difficult to 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 get across in um in uh in the visual medium of of of, of filmmaking it is simply because those characters are you know they're they're bigger than oh god yeah a man mean, or yeah. one woman with a voice it's like you have to create um space to allow you know and i think the novel can do that and i think that's why sometimes when you think about uh bran as you know the eventual ruler of westeros yeah some people were like uh, really but i reckon that in the books it will make a lot more sense if george ends up you know the the final elements are the same as a tv show i think i think it will make a lot more sense in the books yes. than than it did in in the in the show just cuz it's so hard it's so hard to create a character that is you know is that I, I always remember that moment when when uh you see uh tyrion ask bran to tell him his story oh yeah and of course, we don't get to see the story. The story is really important, but we don't ever get to see it. And I think that is a uh, is 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 because obviously it's really hard to do. We're just going to have a, a scene where we where where Bran sits down, and you know, I don't think that that's going to make very good TV. Yeah, I get that. But at the same time, it's really important. But in yeah. a novel, you can do that. No, I totally understand it, and I think. The reason why people may have been so against Bran being the king is because they were just they just fell in love with John or Daenerys, and as good as the character Bran was, them two captivated so many people's hearts, and they wanted them to win at the end of the day. I think, but I think Bran was the perfect choice. You know, being the three-eyed raven, it it, it made the most sense story-wise. I think. So yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a mystic being he's yeah, not bran. exactly he's not bran anymore that's the weird thing and i think that's that was really difficult to convey in the, in the tv show and i and I, even i have reservations about that and it had nothing to do with isaac's performance it's just it's one of those things it's just hard to write and and portray yeah. you know within the medium of, of what we're dealing with because it, it's it's huge and i think uh you know, with a bit more time, you know, my, my biggest gripe about season seven and eight is that is that I feel like they rushed it when, in fact, they really should have done 10 episodes. But uh, I I think um, I think it's uh, it's just going to be really interesting. And I really um, I think also with the, our podcast, I think we shouldn't be afraid to kind of like uh, talk about the books 
in yeah. relation to the show because I think it's it, it's going to be a whole new world because we know a lot about the Targaryens and George has written a lot and created a lot of world. His world building has been amazing. So House of, Dr of the Dragons will be a different experience. We'll know a lot. There'll be lots of um, reference points that we can all look to, but it will not be based on a novel. It will be best based on stories that yes. we kind of know. You know, that's, yeah. the, that's the beauty of George's work. Yeah, I hope it's told in such a good way that it delivers how villainous the Targaryens were at some point in time. And it, does it, is, it, is it the series it's focused on the series? Or have they not stated which Targaryens? It, it, we don't, we don't, we, well, we know who some of the characters are, but, we, but, but to be honest, it's going to be a bit pointless trying to speculate really what the story is because it's so tightly under wraps. We exactly. know a little bit, but I, I, I feel like some of it is just uh, um, what people hope will be in it. Right? Yeah, exactly, yes. But I, I'm hoping that it will be surprising enough that that some people will be will be like, oh wow, really? We're going to do that? <laughs> yeah. So, so I think that would be interesting. Yeah, we definitely need wow moments like we got in Game of Thrones that just stood out to most against a lot of TV shows, and that's why I want to go on to the next thing. What out of Game of Thrones stood out to you as huge points that changed uh, the way we watch TV, and that made Game of Thrones one of the most important TV shows on our screens to watch. Well, season one really laid the groundwork in the sense that I remember when we were all sitting out, we're standing outside the the hotel in Belfast after we did the first read through, and uh, we're all smoking fags because back then we were smoking smoking fags. Everyone smoked <laughs> fags. I don't <laughs> smoke fags anymore. We're all just really nervous and like full of like adrenaline. Um, it's. Um, it was it's really interesting because of course it's a it's a fantasy story without the fantasy especially at the beginning season one um was like uh you know it's a show about um the supernatural and the undead and dragons but without any of those things it was the idea yes. that it used to it's like a myth you know and and i think the beauty of it is that it trod that fine line where it teased you with this idea, especially that very first opening scene in the yes. very first episode. And um, and I think that was what was so very exciting. Like with things like The Walking Dead, you know, the 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 great thing about a lot of it is that sometimes it's about the demons, the zombies, whatever yes. you want to call them. Uh, and sometimes it's about the humans and, and you know, who, who is your greatest threat? And I think, you know, w w walking that fine line between, you know, are, are the White Walkers your biggest threat or are, is it the humans who yeah, are Cersei. your enemies? Yeah. And so I think that that's, that's uh, for my money, that's why I loved all the stuff around the Lannisters. I thought that was m the most gripping part of the the story of game of thrones and uh and the machinations the backstabbing the the you, who do you trust who don't you trust to me that was really exciting there's plenty of other stuff that was very very exciting but but for me the politics of 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 uh, westeros was was what made it so unpredictable yeah and um uh and it allowed you to it, it kind of gave space um, to to who these characters were, and it gave you some understanding for their motivations. Because you know, uh, as we were very aware, the Starks, although they were very very uh, noble, honourable people, the um, it didn't really <laughs> serve them very no. well. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, interestingly enough, the ones who uh, survived the longest were the ones who were, were the most ruthless and the ones who, who, you know, would do anything to do that. So, yes. so I think there's lots of lessons there to be learned. Um, as far as 
obviously the Ned Stark thing feels like so long ago that it does, doesn't it? <laughs> but for me, for me, the unpredictability was what made it exciting. The 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 episode that really I felt where Game of Thrones changed, I think, was Hard Home. Yes, I would agree. I'm right in remembering that it was the moment we really saw how the the Night King operate the threat. That's when he brought them all back from the dead, wasn't it? And they looked back on and then like, I, oh I think that's when we realized that the show had decided that the stakes had to increase to yeah. such an I mean that as far as the story went was a game changer. That's when we realized that that this threat that we were we kind of what was is that threat. And of course it, that's when it went full on this is now about uh an existential threat and the threat is the undead and it's yes. like whoa okay <laughs> So, so to me, that that felt like a real game changing moment within a sh a series uh, on a TV show that had was full of groundbreaking moments. Yeah. Um, and 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 I remember watching that and thinking to myself, "Wow, that is epic. That is that is okay. Now, now you've changed the rules again." Yes. That was the thing, yeah, like you said about Game of Thrones, you never knew what to expect. You walked into a character walked into a room. And you didn't know if they were going to live. That's why Game of Thrones stands out against a lot of shows. Because as you said, with Ned Stark, no one expected him to die in the first series. Um, Rob Stark to not make it past season three. It was these crazy points where you're thinking they were supposed to live to the end. <laughs> but, you know, it's that's why it stands out against, as you said, The Walking Dead, perhaps. And I think, like you said about Hard Home, being a standout moment as against the walkers. I think the red wedding is the standout point of the human threat yeah. as that moment was just horrible for the Stark family and, well, and the audience. Involved. Well, yeah, <laughs> they were definitely scarred. <laughs> I was, I was working in uh, Manchester doing a play and, um, this is a long time ago. I think I'd just done, I think, we, you know, Game of Thrones had just started. Yeah. I don't think the Red, the Red Wedding had even been aired by that point. I think it was around season two. And I was doing a play with a, with a, a dear friend of mine and he was a huge um, Game of Thrones fan, but right. because of the books, you know, he was a fan, he'd, he was a fan for the show. Right. And I remember him saying to me, I could, I, I read the first three books, but after the Red, Red Wedding, I, I threw them away and, and was so angry and upset. And I was so upset that I'd, I'd had invested so much in my emotional capital, years of reading these books and waiting for these books. And then that happened. I was so angry and upset that I never read another one of the oh, books. Wow. <laughs> and he was like, he was not, he was not just saying that for effect. He was like, I'm not, you know, I am, ang I'm still angry. So let alone when they actually filmed it. And yeah, David was... and Dan were very clear. They said, you know, the, one of the main reasons why they wanted to turn it into a TV show in the very beginning was that, that scene. I'm sure so, that could, so that they could put that on, to, in, it, on television because they knew it would blow people's minds. And it did. It was desperately tragic and desperately predictable. <laughs> that was the other thing. <laughs> you know, the sense of dread was always there because we never knew what was going to happen from one minute to the next. Yeah. We knew that that could happen. We couldn't quite believe that they would go there, but obviously if you'd read the books, you knew that they do, but, uh, but to see it realized is, uh, and Michelle's performance in that yes the cat is it's heartbreaking you know yeah they, to got, see they get screen. everything right the tone the 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 way that it's you know it, it's played out the the you know the the rhythm of that scene is really really good it's almost like it's a heartbeat yeah until the heartbeat stops it's really it's quite special no, I agree the whole scene was performed to perfection from as you said music acting and when she just screams it just takes every emotion out probably that every when you're watching that scene you're just like 
you just feel how she's feeling, just uh, lifeless, emotionless. As to see your your son die is just. Obviously, I can't imagine because I don't have a son, but you know what I mean. <laughs> can't be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. Really, just you talking about it makes me remember it. It's like it's horrible. Yeah, well, I got into Game of Thrones um, at the start of season five, so I've been miles behind. And then, obviously, picking up these scenes as I go on was just crazy. And then, obviously, to see John die in the season four finale was a huge hitter as well. So these moments just stand out to me, even to this day. And I've not seen Game of Thrones in, what, about three, four years properly. So, well, when did Game of Thrones season eight come out? 2018? Maybe. Maybe. Just feels like it came out ages ago. The trouble is, <laughs> since the pandemic, I have lost all track of time. I have no idea what was one year ago, two years ago, or three years ago. I, I know what you mean. Cannot even if I looked at a diary, <laughs> I would not be able to tell you. It's it's done that much damage to my sense of time. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's really, I have no idea. I know. I know it's been a very long. That's time, what so. we need our the viewers and yes. the, the <laughs> subscribers to this. YouTube channel to, to that's what we need is we need people who know this kind of stuff. <laughs> Me and my senile adult mind. <laughs> I feel like I've aged like 10 years in two years. Good I know it's been God. a crazy yeah, time. Exactly. Um, so I just want to finish, you know, wrap up this introduction on one final thing. And at this moment in time, before we go back, you know, to reflect on everything in Game of Thrones and in that world. What's the one thing that you're most uh, thankful for for this franchise that has allowed you to be in this world and to enjoy the stories and the characters? What's the thing that stands out most to you? Well, it feels like two things. Like the one, one is, like I said, I, I, it's a very interesting thing. Being, being, only being in the first season was very good for me because it meant that. I could enjoy it without any pressure. Like sure. if I was still in it, I'd be watching it a little bit like this because I, you know, because that's how I am. I, I know for some people they might find that very difficult to understand, but, but um, not all of us as actors go into it because we're egomaniacs. I, so. my ego works in many different ways, but one of them is not loving watching myself. <laughs> let's, just, <laughs> let's just be clear about that. That's why whenever I get a chance to really change the way I look and my, you know, that's my favorite because, yeah. you know, part of it is about being someone else, you know, like you are yourself, but, but the layers you put on top of it is what, is what uh, I find really satisfying. And, you know, it's kind of, that's what the creative appeal to me is. Um, uh, uh, but the, the being able to watch it, you know, to, to truly watch it and invest myself in it is was 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 really great, and it allowed me to really enjoy it. And I, you know, I was a huge fan. I watched it, you know, as soon as it came out. I'd sometimes stay up all night so I could see, you know, when it was released in America. Um, for me, you know, it, it was it was the beginning of the way we watch television in a very different way. And so, I remember being you know, traveling the world, doing conventions while the show was still on, uh, being in Texas, in Houston, watching uh, an episode. In fact, the episode where the mountain and Oberyn uh, have the fight. Oh, yes. It really the is the mountain. <laughs> the, you know, I remember being in, in, a, in a crowd of like 500 people in a bar in Houston, watching it on the big screen together. Wow. That, that, the fact that you know, Game of Thrones created a community that watched this thing together. Being in Cyprus with my with my friends, uh, having Game of Thrones nights where we'd go around on a, on a Monday, I think is when when they would show it. Yeah. And we'd be, you know, we'd order food and we'd all sit down and, and watch it together. The sense of community. Yeah. Uh, and that I've really experienced doing fan conventions was to me the greatest achievement of that show you know uh, making us watch that you know it, remember where we are we're 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 at a point now where we stream things and watch things when we can when we want yeah 
you know, you can watch it anytime, you can binge it, you can, you know, I'm, I'm quite glad that there are certain shows still like on Disney Plus that 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 release them only once a week. I think that's yeah, I agree. good. I think it's good that we watch things together. Um, but Game of Thrones, that, that was a completely different, on a different scale, you know, going to places and watching it with 200, five, you know, even, yeah. you know, a few friends, but the sense of community and having to watch it when it came out because you did not want to be spoiled. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, that that was a phenomenon. And that was really, for me personally, the greatest uh, achievement of, of what they did with that, with that story. And of course, that's the reason why people were so angry and divided. And, you know, you know, that the, the, the season eight, you know, of course, it, that was going to happen when when people are invested that much. Yeah. You're never going to have, a, a you know, an easy ride. You're just never going to do it. You can't please everyone, can you? That's the thing. You it's, can't. You yeah. can't. Um, I, I have my criticisms and during the. The, 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 the you know the, the, these uh, these episodes I will be uh, very explicit and I will not hold back I will I will tell you exactly what I think I don't owe HBO anything I mean maybe anyway I <laughs> uh, but uh, but uh, but you know you'll hear exactly what I I believe in it because you know I think we, we you know it's just you know it's just my honest opinion and 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 uh, you know it doesn't negate just how important it was of course uh, on a as a from an actor's point of view of course it's changed my life completely because I will be the person when I die I will have not today on my gravestone but with not crossed out I'm sure in fact I'm insisting on it and if it doesn't happen because obviously I won't have any control over it if it doesn't happen I'll be incredibly upset <laughs> Well, so, no, you know, I'll make sure it happens. <laughs> yeah, right, thank you. Um, <laughs> it's just that we, you know, it, it was a huge thing and none of us expected it to be the success it was. It was more than a success though. That's the, that's the thing. There's a lot of very successful shows that do very, very well, but, but it, it's the fact that it was more than a TV show, that it was yep. a, it was a cultural phenomenon that, that, that is what uh, changed things. And like I said, the way we watch TV, the way we watch our, you know, how we tell stories and these things are, are exciting. And, uh, and I hope it happens again. I hope yep. it happens again, because I think it's, there's nothing quite like creating a community, even if at the end of it, they all ended up like really <laughs> fighting each other. Yeah. <laughs> you know, at least they created something. They created war between the fan base. <laughs> you know, yeah. it kind of feels appropriate considering yeah. what Game of Thrones is about. It's yeah, like it's different houses, you know, the factions. Stuff, yeah, <laughs> maybe that's what they wanted all along. Exactly. Exactly. And I agree with everything you said. And the, one of the main things I want to add is I love the theories. You know, obviously all the theorizing about who's going to return. Is that person dead? Uh, who will sit on the throne? I always loved every week of um at the end of the end of the season finales what was going to happen and what was building towards the next stories and i just loved all the fan accounts and the fan interaction and i think it built for a better show the show was amazing on its own but as you said the people made it better because of how big they made it so we could always be grateful for the community that george r martin uh, has created so yeah huge yeah, props everyone, to those guys you know, we, we you know i think sometimes you know we all get we always get frustrated as creative people we get frustrated sometimes with the fans because you know most of the time people are doing the best that they actually can do you know it's exactly no, no, one, no one wants to ruin anything right no. no but it's it i think sometimes people maybe forget how difficult it is to yes to kind of make this stuff you're right so so um but the bottom line is it would be nothing without that intense fan uh, community Absolutely. and uh, and it's really important that we never ever forget that that it's you know it's very easy to to want to put your fingers in the air in your ears and go na 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 <laughs> na, 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 na but but um but this is what happens when you create a world which is so detailed um that it becomes it doesn't 
it can't you kind of hand it over to the people that love it yes you know it's the reason why people create fan fiction and and why people have theories and it creates its own mythology and it's testament to what george uh, george created that that people could do that yeah um and um for all the good and the bad that it creates it's still an amazing achievement and uh you know and i and i love the fan community uh, I think uh, I think if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be sitting here doing this. Of course, exactly. And I know, I, again, I'll say this, I never envisioned sitting down with yourself, you know, to have a full on podcast, and have these discussions. And, you know, I'm always grateful for these opportunities and I'm excited for the future of what this podcast has in store. So I hope everyone enjoyed the first episode. Um if you want to have any of your ideas inputted into the show, leave them down below and me and Miltos will be able to discuss and, you know, plan these episodes going forward and just enjoy the countless topics we can have on this amazing show. And I'm sure yeah, it'll be and fantastic. Let's, and let's really, uh, just to, to reiterate what you've just said, let's really uh, make it interactive. Yeah. Let's truly make it interactive. Let's even... Um, uh, if it's possible, get some people on to, to talk yeah. with us about it. That'd be I know, great. you know, lots of people within the community, people I've met at fan conventions who who I would love to have on. So so let's let's yeah. So tell us, tell us what you want us to talk about. Tell us um, what you want to see. Um, yeah, we'll be your Junie. <laughs> uh, so thanks everyone for watching these episodes will air every sunday um at a specific time which we me and miltos will confirm via social media so make sure you're up to date with miltos and mine's facebook or instagram whatever we decide to do it via um thanks for watching as always it's going to be a great roller coaster this and i'm very excited for the future uh, thanks again to my amazing co-host miltos yero lemo sirio farrell and take care till next time thanks for watching